often also known as reciprocal structures, uh, nexoraids have a overlapping form rather than struts that meet at a hub. They have this overlapping nature. And today I'm going to show you how really quite simple it is to draw these up in um, SketchUp or your other favourite um, CAD software. Okay, let's get started. Um, I've done a bit of pre-preparation here. I've got a um, two-frequency sphere, colour-coded, so we can kind of get an idea of um, uh, what we're starting with and what we're building this from. Uh, and we need to take some information from this. We need uh, we know that a two-frequency dome has two unique strut lengths. Uh, and what I've taken is the um, center point by drawing a, from one top of a pentagon down to the bottom and then uh, from one of the higher upside ones to a lower one and we get the center and we need the center on this and we need um, two struts marked as well in the location that they should be. Um, we want to create a individual struts uh, of each type uh, but we don't want to, the faces because this obviously this has got a pipe type structure so we don't want faces so we've got what we've got to do is we've got to make com a component uh, of each edge um, and then with these port components we'll these two different components we'll spread them around the, the um, sphere to make a sphere up so what we have to do is um, make these initial components and then we're just going to um, copy paste and spin them around to make the dome structure um, and once we have a component we change something on one of those components and it'll change on all the others and it makes things uh, much easier. We'll be using the rotate tool quite a lot so it's probably worth having a quick description about um, how that works. In SketchUp uh, when you use the rotate tool you select a point and then um, you can drag it to another point and that creates an axle so you, it, that means your component will spin about that axle and we use this feature quite a lot if we take the rotate tool for example click on the on the top and then slide it down you can see how it's following my pointer if you slide it down and lock it to the center it creates a axis about which you can rotate uh, your component we're using this quite a lot uh, in this tutorial so if you work out how to do that in SketchUp you should be fine I'll give you a quick example here we've um, clicked on the on this component and we're going to spin it around the central point there now copy hit the alt key to make a copy and that gives us another strut and we'll just continue doing that to build up the dome. We have all the edges for uh, that top pentagon but what we need now is the edges for the equilateral triangle on this as well so I'm just going to wander over to the um, pattern I have on the left and pull them over. Once you have a few of them, you can then you just need the uh, a few a couple of reference points to build the rest of the um, struts. And all we're going to do is rotate from now on. We have a uh, the pentagon and the um, equilateral panels, um, the center point of the sphere. Uh, so we have everything we need now, and we're just going to rotate, um, copy and rotate to to fill out this sphere. The first thing I'll do is mark the center of this equilateral triangle. We need that for our first rotation. 
Um, but after that we can rub it out and we don't need to use it anymore. I'm just going to rotate again, I'm hovering. Click on the center of the triangle. I normally use a panel for that, you can see how that works. And drag it to the center point. Release and that gives you your uh, axis by which you're going to rotate. We're just going to rotate this pentagon a couple of times round. We'll make a copy there uh, and do another rotation. There we go. Uh, so what we've got here essentially is um, a face of an icosahedron. But it's a two frequency obviously so it's it has this uh, the triangle in the middle there. But that is one twentieth of a sphere. Um, all we have to do now is rotate this. Um, and I'll show you the most efficient way to do that. If we look over at our pattern, we can see that we have an orange pentagon in three corners and the equilateral in the middle. Um, and all we're going to do is repeat that, repeat that, repeat that around the whole sphere. Uh, so what we'll do is um, we'll select the edges that we need. Uh, obviously we don't want to select the edges and those ones there because we don't want to double them up. As we rotate 180 degrees we don't want to copy them and have double layers of components so we'll, we'll you know, rub them out. So we've selected everything above that. And all we'll do is we'll do 180 spin. You can see that the edges, all they are lines at the moment, but we're going to convert them later on. We're doing 180 spin. And that gives us um, 2.2, so that's uh, a tenth of a icosahedron. So we can now select both of those and we'll do a similar turn uh, swivel operation again. We have to rub a couple of, um, not deselect I should say, a couple of components because we don't want to copy them uh, over the top of each other. Do another um, rotation. Again we click on a corner and then slide it into the center to run along that axis and do another 180 turn. Like that, and that gives us one fifth of a GD6 sphere. You can see that there now. So, what we have to do next is select all of that. I'll deselect the uh, little center line in that, I don't want to copy that, so I'll deselect that. So we have all of our components, our edge components selected. Um, and then we can simply rotate again from above. This is directly from above now. Um, and we're going to do, rotate 72 degrees because that's uh, a pe the angle of a, on a pentagon. Sometimes it's difficult in SketchUp to, to click on a component that's live. So we'll have to nip down and put the exact angle in because it, it won't lock to something that's up that you're trying to copy and paste for some reason. We'll repeat that, we would just do four, make four, and that's us finished. Because obviously we did four down and five around equals 20. Um, we've done all, all the faces. And once we've got our um, framework, our geodesic framework, we can then work on each component and if we change it, it'll change everything on that model so that we don't have to change each strut individually we just change one in this case we've got two unique ones so we have to do two um, different struts if you like and um, I've taken two of the struts and I've stood them upright and um, because it makes them easier to work on and that's how, all we have to do is work on those two struts to, to um, make this structure work I'm simply going to open up this component uh, and 
grab the circle tool and we're going to make a disc basically on the top and then we're going to extrude it with the push pull tool and that makes um, a piece of pipe basically that's the strut that we're going to make uh, and everywhere where that component is will be turned into a pipe There we go. We've got to grab it underneath. We want it probably at this. We need to make it a bit longer than this, uh, but for now we'll just make it the exact length of the um, line strut. So basically, we've got the line inside this pipe. We have to do the the other comp component exactly the same way. Double click it, and you can see it has a little box around it when it's a component, and that means anything we do to that will um, be repeated across all the components. Okay, let's take a look at how that looks on our uh, sphere. Looks like we've got a lot of piped sphere now. It's uh, as I had uh, components on the um, left hand pattern, call that a jiggle or something, but the pipes are shown up on there as well. And now we've got our pipes, we can then move on to do the reciprocal action on it. And I'll show you that now. It's one of those things that looks, or it seems, I should say, fairly complicated. You think, oh, blame me, how do I, how do, I do this? But actually, the actual uh, process of building a reciprocal frame is super easy, really. I'm just going to set up on my drone, uh, I've got a line that runs um, from the centre of the sphere out through the center of each different strut. So that gives me two lines to work with. Um, I'll, I need those just to uh, give to get my points for rotation about, otherwise you, you, it's very difficult to get the a point to, to rotate about. Uh, but first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lengthen the pipe. Um, because as we spin the frame, the, the make the reciprocal frame if you like, we need the, our struts to be longer longer because they won't be long enough otherwise. So first off the bat, uh, I'm going to make both of these struts, um, I think, one, one, uh, one and a half metres longer. On this drone, it's one and a half metres, but um, obviously it depends on what scale you have your drone at and what diameter your pipes are. So we, basically what we have here is a um, pipe with a line on the inside. Uh, we can select that pipe and if we triple click it it won't select that line which is very important because we don't want to move that line we just want to move the pipe. You'll get, we'll get to it shortly about how, how we create this reciprocal thing and it's really super easy it's not difficult anybody can manage it I think. And uh, this will work with any polyhedron, uh, it's a spherical based polyhedron. It doesn't matter what it is, this is a two frequency here that we're using, but it really doesn't matter what it is, it works with anything. Right, there's our lengthened frames. Now we've pushed them out past the, uh, the end. Um, and the next step is we've got to make a rotation. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll select a pipe. like that and you can see the line that I'm going to rotate it about. We'll double click it because we're going to make a change to the component. If you didn't double click it you would just turn it. So we double click it and then we get the rotate tool. 
I'm going to line it up so I can see um, where to rotate this about. Here we go. We're doing that thing where we select and slide into the middle and then we can rotate our strut. So you know that it's, it's all we're doing is rotating the pipe um, from, from its middle in line with the center with a line that goes to the center. Uh, now with these the thickness of the pipe dictates how much you want to rotate. Um, if it's a thick pipe you need to rotate it more. Uh, on this one I'm, go I'm going about 24 degrees just so if you want to I'll maybe put the um, uh, file up for you. Um, but if you want if you want to know what that is it's about 20 odd degrees have a bit play see what you want but the general idea is that you spin it just enough so that each pipe is touching and not overlapping and there's no gap between them right I'm going to pick up the pace here because we haven't none of us have got all night uh, quickly do the um, the other strut in a similar fashion uh, spin that again 24 degrees uh, and from there we'll um, color code it so you can I can show you um, just do a quick bit of coloring so I can show you the difference between the pentagon strut and the equilateral strut it just makes it le slightly less complicated to look at and then you can kind of see that there's only two struts in the whole thing um, and it but the, the structure looks really complicated and really difficult but it's actually uh, all we've done is spin each strut lengthen it and spin it uh, 24 degrees okay and um, th that's about it really um, I'll do a quick bit of rendering here and um, to make it look nice but um, that's it for this episode um, I will be doing more um, in the future with uh, reciprocal structures and uh, other things like that so like and subscribe uh, if you'd like to see more like this and I'll see you in the next one